ever hit play on your track and thought, this could sound so much better? You're not alone. Mixing is the magic that turns raw recordings into polished gems. But where do you even start? Welcome to Mixing Basics for Beginners. Master your tracks for maximum impact. This video is your first step towards achieving those professional sounding tracks you've been dreaming of. Whether you're mixing your first song or looking to brush up on the basics, we'll guide you through the essential techniques of mixing. From finding the perfect balance to applying EQ and compression like a pro, get ready to unlock the full potential of your music and elevate your tracks from good to unforgettable. Let's dive in and make your mixes stand out. Understanding mixing. Mixing is the art and science of blending together all the different components of a musical track, vocals, instruments, effects, into a cohesive whole. It's where technical precision meets creative expression and it plays a pivotal role in the music production process. The goal? To ensure that every element is heard clearly, harmoniously balanced, and collectively contributing to the song's overall emotional impact and sonic landscape. Your primary goal is to ensure that nothing interferes with the listener's experience of the song. It's more about preserving the essence and flow of the music than achieving a flawless recording. At the heart of the mixing process is the Digital Audio Workstation, or DAW. This powerful software is where you'll spend hours tweaking and refining your track. It's the canvas for your audio painting, offering an array of tools and features to shape your sound. Whether you're cutting frequencies with an EQ, adjusting levels, or adding spatial effects like reverb and delay, your DAW is your command center. Monitoring your mix accurately is crucial, which is where studio monitors and headphones come into play. Monitors provide a flat, uncolored representation of your sound, allowing you to make informed decisions that translate well across different listening environments. Headphones, particularly closed back models for isolating sound, offer an intimate listening experience, perfect for detailed editing and mixing in quiet spaces. The ultimate goal of mixing is threefold. Achieve clarity, so every note and word is intelligible. Balance, ensuring no element overpowers another and enhancing the overall feel of the music, whether that's making a track more energetic, atmospheric, or emotionally moving. By carefully adjusting levels, panning, EQ, compression, and effects, you bring out the best in your recording, transforming a collection of individual tracks into a single, impactful piece of music that resonates with listeners. This is the transformative power of mixing, taking the raw materials of your creativity and sculpting them into something greater than the sum of their parts, balance and volume control. Achieving the right balance between tracks is the cornerstone of a great mix. It ensures that each element of the song, from the lead vocals to the rhythm section, coexists harmoniously, allowing the listener to appreciate the music's full spectrum without any one component overshadowing the others. This balance is critical not just for clarity, but also for maintaining the listener's focus on the intended emotional and dynamic shifts throughout the track. Begin your mix by positioning the kick, bass, snare, and lead vocal squarely in the center, forming a solid core. Then, carefully arrange the remaining elements to the left and right, filling the stereo space around this central foundation. This approach not only supports and enhances the core, but also ensures a harmonious balance, with the left and right sides of the mix feeling evenly distributed. Make subtle volume adjustments are your first tool in establishing this balance. By carefully setting the levels of each track, you ensure that nothing is too dominant or too recessed. This process often involves bringing the most important elements of your mix, typically the vocals and lead melody, to the forefront, while supporting instruments find their place just behind. Consider turning down what is too loud rather than turning up what you can't hear. Panning, on the other hand, adds dimension and space to your mix. By strategically placing elements in the stereo field, from left to center to right, you can create a sense of width that mirrors a live performance or even enhances it. This not only makes your mix more engaging, but also helps in preventing frequency clashes by physically separating sounds that might otherwise compete for space. Pro tip, 
An effective strategy in achieving a balanced mix is to use a reference track. Select a song that is professionally mixed and shares a similar sound or genre to your own work. By comparing your mix to this reference, you can gauge levels, spatial placement, and overall balance more objectively. This comparison doesn't mean replicating the reference track, but rather using it as a benchmark to ensure your mix meets professional standards. Reference tracks are invaluable in providing a clear target for your mixing efforts, guiding your decisions, and ultimately enhancing the quality of your final mix. EQ Basics Equalization, or EQ, is an essential tool in the mixing process, allowing you to shape and refine the frequency content of each track. By adjusting EQ settings, you can highlight or diminish specific frequency ranges, thereby controlling how each instrument fits into the mix. The goal is to ensure that every element has its own space, reducing frequency overlap that can lead to a muddy or cluttered sound. EQ works by allowing you to boost, increase, or cut, decrease frequencies across the audio spectrum. For instance, you might boost the high frequencies of a vocal track to add brightness and clarity, or cut the low frequencies of a guitar track to reduce muddiness and make room for the bass. Proper use of EQ can dramatically enhance the clarity and definition of your mix, making each instrument audible and distinct. The key to effective EQing is knowing when to cut and when to boost. A good rule of thumb is to cut frequencies to fix problems and boost frequencies to enhance characteristics. Cutting is often more effective because it removes unwanted frequencies without adding energy to the mix, which can cause other issues. For example, if two instruments are competing in the same frequency range, consider cutting some of those frequencies from the less dominant instrument to allow the other to stand out. When boosting frequencies, it's important to do so sparingly. Excessive boosting can introduce unwanted noise or distortion into the mix and make it sound unnatural. Instead, focus on subtle enhancements that accentuate the positive aspects of each track. In practice, using EQ effectively involves a lot of listening and tweaking. Start with broad adjustments and then refine your settings as the mix comes together. Pay attention to how changes in one track affect the overall balance and feel of the mix. Remember, EQ is a powerful tool, but its best use is often in making subtle adjustments that contribute to a well-balanced, clear, and cohesive mix. Pro tip. Always keep an eye on your levels throughout the mixing process to avoid clipping at any stage, from individual processors to the master channel. Tempting as it may be to crank up the volume for a louder output, this can lead to clipping and distortion. Instead, utilize mastering plugins to achieve the desired loudness without maxing out your levels. A personal favorite of mine is the L316 Stereo from Waves, available for individual purchase. This tool can help you maintain a clean, dynamic mix while reaching your loudness goals. Compression is a pivotal mixing tool that serves multiple purposes, primarily dynamic control and enhancing the punch or presence of a track within a mix. At its core, compression reduces the dynamic range of an audio signal, the difference between the loudest and quietest parts. By doing so, it brings up the quieter moments and tames the louder peaks, making the overall performance more consistent in volume. Let's break down the basic settings of a compressor and how they influence the sound. Threshold. This setting determines the volume level at which the compressor starts to reduce the gain. Signals that exceed this level are compressed. Lowering the threshold means more of the signal will be compressed, leading to a more consistent volume. Ratio. The ratio decides how much compression is applied once the signal surpasses the threshold. A higher ratio results in more compression a 4 to 1 ratio means that for every 4 dB, the input signal goes over the threshold, the output signal will only increase by 1 dB. Attack. The attack time controls how quickly the compressor reacts to signals that exceed the threshold. A faster attack time will compress the signal more immediately, which can be useful for taming sharp transients. A slower attack allows some of the signal's initial transient to pass through uncompressed, maintaining more of the natural punch. Release. 
Release time determines how quickly the compressor stops affecting the signal once it falls back below the threshold. A shorter release time will return the signal to its original dynamic range more quickly, while a longer release time can smooth out the volume fluctuations more gradually. Applying compression to different instruments or vocals can significantly improve clarity and consistency across the mix. For vocals, light compression can even out the performance, ensuring that every word is heard clearly. For drums, compression can add punch and make each hit feel more impactful. Bass guitar can benefit from compression by smoothing out the levels, making the bass line more consistent without losing its groove. By adjusting these settings, you can tailor the compressor to suit the needs of each track, enhancing the overall balance and cohesion of your mix. Remember, the key to effective compression is subtlety. It's about controlling dynamics without squashing the life out of your music. Adding effects. In the mixing process, effects such as reverb, delay, and others are essential tools for adding depth, dimension, and character to your tracks. These effects, when used judiciously, can elevate a flat, lifeless mix into a dynamic, engaging, sonic experience. Reverb is one of the most widely used effects in audio production. It simulates the natural echoes found in physical spaces, from small rooms to vast halls. By adding reverb to a track, you can give it a sense of space, making it feel as though it's being played in a real environment, rather than recorded in a sterile studio. The key to using reverb effectively is to apply just enough to add this sense of space without making the mix sound muddy or distant. For instance, a little reverb on vocals can make them soar above the mix, while a touch on snare drums can add a sense of depth. Think about applying reverb to all elements of your mix, except for the bass and kick drum. To keep the reverb from clouding your mix, use a high-pass filter on its output, ensuring clarity and preventing muddiness. Delay, another fundamental effect, repeats the audio signal at a specified interval after the original sound. This can be used creatively to add rhythm and texture to a track. For example, a short, slapback delay on a guitar can create a lively, energetic feel, while a longer, feedback-heavy delay on a vocal track can add a dreamy, ethereal quality. Like reverb, the trick with delay is to find the balance that enhances the track without cluttering the mix. Employ a tap tempo button to synchronize your delay times with the song's tempo, ensuring cohesive rhythm and flow throughout your track. Pro tip. To ensure your delay sits perfectly in the mix without dominating, consider applying both high-pass and low-pass filtering to its output. This technique, akin to a telephone effect, trims the extremes, giving the delay a lighter presence that complements rather than overshadows the main elements. When applying these effects, it's crucial to start with subtle adjustments and gradually increase the effect until it complements the track without overwhelming it. Each element in your mix should contribute to a cohesive whole with effects serving to enhance rather than dominate the sound. Experimenting with real examples of applying these effects can be incredibly instructive. Start with a dry, unprocessed vocal or instrument track and slowly add reverb showcasing how the track gains a sense of place and dimension, then introduce delay, demonstrating how different settings can dramatically change the feel of the track, from subtle thickening to creating a complex rhythmic pattern. Pro tip, avoid employing any processing tools without a clear understanding of their impact on your mix. Uninformed use can complicate your workflow and clutter your sound. Be deliberate with each decision ensuring you incorporate effects and processes because they serve a specific purpose in enhancing your track, not just for the sake of usage. Remember, the goal with effects is to create a mix that feels both spacious and cohesive, where every element has its own place, and the overall sound invites the listener into the musical world you've created. Finalizing your mix. Finalizing your mix is a critical stage in the music production process where your meticulous adjustments and creative decisions come together to form the final product. An essential step in this final stage is ensuring that your mix translates well across various listening environments. 
To ensure your mix translates well, it's vital to test it on different sound systems. This process involves playing your mix on various audio setups and noting any inconsistencies or areas that need adjustment. For example, bass frequencies that feel balanced on studio monitors might overpower or disappear on smaller speakers. By identifying these discrepancies, you can make informed adjustments to your mix, ensuring it maintains its integrity across all playback devices. Another key aspect of finalizing your mix is the importance of taking breaks and revisiting your mix with fresh ears. Continuous listening, especially over long periods, can lead to auditory fatigue, making it difficult to make objective decisions about your mix. Taking regular breaks allows your ears to rest and resets your auditory perspective, so when you return to your mix, you can hear it more clearly and make more precise adjustments. This practice can be the difference between a good mix and a great one. During these breaks, step away from your work environment completely. This not only rests your ears, but also your mind, allowing you to return to your project with renewed energy and perhaps even new ideas. When you come back, you may notice subtle details you hadn't before, enabling you to fine tune your mix to perfection. Remember, the goal is to create a mix that not only meets your artistic vision, but also resonates with listeners everywhere, providing them with the best possible listening experience. As we wrap up this guide on mixing basics for beginners, let's revisit the journey we've embarked on together. From understanding what mixing truly entails and exploring the foundational tools like EQ, compression, and effects, to fine-tuning the balance and ensuring your mix translates well on any system We've covered the essentials that bridge the gap between a basic mix and a polished, professional track. Remember, the path from initial recording to final mix is both a science and an art, requiring patience, practice, and a keen ear. Now, it's your turn to put these tips into action. Practice is key to mastering the art of mixing. Experiment with your tracks, apply the techniques we've discussed, and observe how each adjustment enhances the overall sound. Each project is an opportunity to refine your skills and develop your unique sound. For those eager to dive deeper and elevate their mixing and mastering capabilities, consider exploring our advanced courses. These comprehensive programs are designed to expand your knowledge, introduce more sophisticated techniques, and guide you through complex mixing scenarios, helping you achieve professional-grade soundscapes in your music. If you found value in this video, please hit the like button. It supports the channel and helps more aspiring artists and producers find this resource. Have questions or want to share your mixing experiences and challenges? Drop a comment below. We love hearing from you and aim to build a community of passionate, supportive musicians and producers. And don't forget to subscribe for more content filled with insights, tips, and tutorials to help you make the music you love. Thank you for watching and happy mixing. Remember, the journey to mastering mixing is ongoing and each step forward is a step towards realizing the true potential of your music.